Uh, this next one could be interesting. It is from Jason. My brother and I are 20 year old twins from Maryland and listening to you and Brian twice a week is one of the few things that keep us from snapping and kicking the shit out of morons we deal with every day. We've heard many of your stories about the dregs of the wrestling business from Jim Hurd to that pimple dick Vince Russo, but we've never heard what went down between you and Greg, the office boy in ring of honor other than the occasional brief mention on the experience. And we were wondering what problems you and possibly others had with him. Oh, good Lord. Well, already we, we don't even have time in this program. Um, as a matter of fact, if you go to what's, what's these young fellows names. Uh, well, only one of them is named Jason. I don't know what the brother's name is. Well, hello, Jason, only one of you. And tell your brother. Uh, it's a, like a two-hour story, and it is detailed in the Breaking Kayfabe uh, edition of Jim Cornette, uh, or edition with Jim Cornette uh, from ShootInterviews.com, Kayfabe Commentaries. I will I will promote somebody else's uh, uh, material in this case because it's a wonderful story and it takes at least an hour and a half and also i'm i'm so uh, more relaxed right now i would have a stroke if i worked up the whole story but it, it, uh, my god you just talked about kip fry this guy didn't go quite so far but a 26 year old accountant a kid who's never seen a wrestler in person before right until he until sinclair broadcasting buys ring of honor and suddenly because of the way that apparently that they structure their their companies in the Sinclair business, the the office boy slash stooge uh, who came from the accounting department is actually important and can make decisions and believes he knows the proper decisions to make. And pretty much everybody hated his guts, but nobody would complain about him except me because everybody else is more polite than I am. Uh, so that fell on me to complain a lot. And it was the famous story. I'll just tell this one and then we'll move on so it doesn't become dominated by a bitch fest for once. But when we were debuting at Charleston, West Virginia with a live Ring of Honor uh, event, and I had gone over and, and worked with stations and the station sales manager and the general manager on promoting this thing and lining up sponsors. We signed up $30,000 worth of live event sponsorships from Hooters and a local wacky car dealer. And there was a furniture store involved and it, we're doing a live event in a thousand seat room inside the Charleston civic center. And my thought was we've just debuted on the Fox affiliate and the ABC affiliate. And we're doing some of the best ratings uh, in in the Sinclair universe for Ring of Honor at, at the start in that market. Let's go all seats twenty dollars. Let's try to draw a twenty thousand dollar gate. We've got these thirty thousand dollar live uh, sponsorships sold. We're going to sell some merchandise that night. Let's see if we can get a thousand people to pay twenty bucks with two local network affiliates to come and see a great night of wrestling and kick this thing off with. And we're going to shoot TV there. So it's to our advantage to have a full house <clears throat> of Raven wrestling fans like I know they have in West Virginia. Like, for example, 30 miles down the road in Charleston, <laughs> Gary Damron's All-Star Wrestling, he puts 500 or 1,000 people in the Madison Civic Center in the past to see wrestling with us legends. So I was sabotaged by the fucking moron, Greg the Office Boy, when he insisted that we go in with ticket prices comparable to other major events that are coming into the area when he'd never been to fucking Charles, West Virginia. He, he wanted a $60 fucking front row. I said, my guy, you fucking idiot. That's rent in Charles, West Virginia. For some people, two tickets to four tickets to the goddamn wrestling matches, $240 for a family to sit ringside. <clears throat> you fucking buffoon, right? On this conference call. And we're talking about other things and he's quiet and he's, he, 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 you can hear him tapping away there. And finally he jumps back in a couple minutes later, insisting that we had to charge these high ticket prices because the last time Ringling Brothers was in Charleston at the Civic Center in the big arena that seats 15,000 or whatever, they charged $80 or whatever the fuck. I said, you fucking moron. It's the circus. It's a rite of fucking passage for, for men in the United States of America to take their families, their children to the circus when they're little. 
You fucking moron. It's not a brand new wrestling company. This just started on your local television stations and wanting you to sample their product. That's what do you want us to do? Book a dancing fucking bear. Oh, it, it. Oh, and, and by the way, we went in with, with ticket prices of $60 front row, 52nd, 43rd, and $20, I believe, was the general admit, because it's a flat room, right, just seats. And we did like 312 people. <laughs> the whole place was empty. So, you know, and, and it, there you have it. With all that, the two we had two radio stations, two network TV affiliates advertising it, and with the sponsorship money, pretty much paid for the show anyway. But they didn't consider; they weren't applying the sponsorship money. The TV stations were getting that in, in, instead of Ring of Honor, but they sold it based on we're doing this show and coming to town, and we didn't get credit for any of it. 